all right y'all before i even get inside these canals to fish these lights uh just wanted to let y'all know welcome back to the channel i'm gonna go into silent mode because i don't want to disturb the residents that are here we don't have much time right now to fish these lights because the sun is right about to come up so uh let's get started i'm gonna use an artificial shrimp we're gonna put this one away right now, y'all, and swap over to a paddle tail. Christian just had some luck with a keeper speckled trout. Perfect for the pan. There we go. Yeah, it's a small fella. He was swimming down there towards the lower portion of the light, a tiny little speckled trout. Not a bad catch. At least it gets us on the board, gets the skunk out of the boat. This is gonna be almost our last switch up right here. We've only brought out three setups today and this one is the top water variety. I think we got enough ambient light to be able to pick this up. I just saw like some bait get spooked. The goal is to catch one fish. We'll uh, go home and cook her up and show y'all how we do it. For those of you that are new to the channel, welcome to MDLR Fishing. Hopefully we're gonna be able to get a bigger speckle trout on this top water or whichever other of these lures that we got, skelly shrimp, skelly swim. These are all salt native, which by the way, before we go any further, uh, today's video is sponsored by Catch Co. The lures that we're using are a collaboration between Catch Co and Salt Native. And uh, you can check them out by going to the Carl's website, which over at the Carl's website, uh, they are having their 10th year anniversary sale if you purchase uh, $150 worth of Guggen gear, you can take advantage of getting a free rod from those guys. All the details are gonna be linked in my video description down below. So I highly encourage you to go down there, click on that, go to the Carl site, take a look at these lures, and then also see if you can uh, save big by being able to take advantage of that free rod There's a four inch, it says three inch on the package, but there ain't no way that's three inches. I measured it too. That's a four inch and I just clipped off about a, a quarter of an inch. So it's three and three quarters of an inch. Carl's Amazing Baits. Day two, welcome back everyone. Let's see if these dock lights are gonna be any better for us. Pitch dark out here, but that's the way we want it rain in the forecast again that's just the way it goes this time of year all these pop-up storms that show up along the gulf coast but uh, let's go hit these lights and see if we can get one or two keepers that's the goal let's get a uh, a nice lunch or dinner depending on when we get back home that's one There we are, y'all. First keeper of the day. Most definitely a keeper. We'll go back over to Christian and I will get this fella measured up. I want to say he's right there. All I've had is one small guy come. No, he's like right at 15. Right there, y'all. Yeah, with the closed mouth. Yeah. Well, thought he was gonna be a keeper. Let's let this fella go and continue growing. Uh, the white paddle tail, the new one by Carl's. 
careful because that doesn't float. There we go. There we go. That's a good puller right here. Definitely, this one's a keeper. Well, I said that about the other one, but this one I do think is going to be a keeper. Now all we got to do is just bleed him. There we go. Yeah, 15 and a half open mouth. One more, and then that's tacos. There we are. That's a little fella, though. At least he feels little. Yeah. Definitely a little guy. Chill out, bro. We got a lot of bait right here alongside this flooded grass. I've heard a couple of blow ups, but I haven't seen any. Uh oh. I don't know if that. Yeah, that had to have been mullet thumping my line. Um, yeah, very few blow ups. This here is like literally the holy grail for kayak fishermen. Mainly because of not being able to access the water. There's no close spot to launch. Like the only place to launch publicly is about four miles away. And it takes forever just to get here by kayak. To do The last time we were here, pretty good day. I mean, we caught quite a few reds inside the marsh. And then some speckled trout out here in the running water. It has the potential to uh, just be a phenomenal day when you get here because it's not really pressured by kayaks. And almost all the skiffs and everything are always going to go inside the, uh, the marsh. That's right there, our second keeper. There we go. That's a nice healthy keeper right there. This guy is a fatty like look at it it's a fatty look at that it's a nice slob all right let's uh, hurry up and process this fella trout it's good seeing them this far back into the marsh i mean because we are out here let me tell you definitely super far i'd rather see that than than ladyfish lots of moving water that's the key to the bite that's taking place right now got plenty of moving water All right, I'm gonna put this guy away. We're gonna go to the shrimp, go completely around the horn and see if uh, they wanna go after this fella just for a quick second. All righty, come on, do your worst. It's a small speckled trout. They're actually hitting a lot of the tiny little bait fish.
Yeah, everything loves shrimp, especially out here in the marsh. You cannot pass up the opportunity to eat a poor, defenseless, helpless little shrimp. Let's see if there's another one over here. Yep. <laughs> These little guys. We're going to whack them left and right. The first one that we hooked into, that was a keeper. These guys. Oh, these are just the little runts. All the little schooling tiny turds. A lot of growing needs to be done before you can go to somebody's plate. I hope Christian's having a, a good go at finding them reds. Oh, flounder. Oh my gosh. He didn't look that big, but dude just... Well, y'all saw him try to go under that kayak and pull the okie doke on me. Definitely a keeper and definitely going home. That's the last one that we're going to keep. That's more than enough food. Oh yes, this guy has got some beef cakes on him. Look at that, another blow up. That's why I say this is like one of the holy grails of places to fish here in West Bay. Because it's got a lot of good fishing and there's so much real estate out here as well. No need to measure this fella because he's going to be perfectly fine. All right, uh, we're going to dispatch this guy, hurry up and spike him on the brain and uh, spinal tap him and we'll uh, continue fishing. Got you. Here we go. If I can just get it to run along, there we go. There we are. Run the length of his body. And he's done. We'll bleed him out and we're good. There's a definite difference in the texture of the flesh whenever we don't do that process. It's like super firm. This meat feels so good. 
because Why? because of the way we took care of it. I can tell the difference between yours smell and it. Christian's. Like smell it. Doesn't smell like anything. Doesn't smell like no fish. It doesn't smell decayed at all. Yeah, it doesn't. Uh, are Christians in there too? Yeah. So his are the two that are red. Already, he just didn't take the time to bleed his out. So you can see the big difference. Yeah, you can. Just a little bit can darker. Can you keep them separate when you cook them so we can taste the difference too? Yeah, I can. A little bit more seasoning in here. We have one. Okay, Liza. Is it okay? Mm -hmm. Mom, I was literally joking. Can you make me a shirt like that? What? It says, I like MDLR's fish tacos. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's what I just told her. Mom needs to shoot this. <laughs> oh my gosh. MDLR's biggest fan. It has a picture of dad with the heart around it. Oh God. <laughs> Let me hold it. <laughs> So you can make your taco. Yeah, they want you to actually see. You can't adjust it, or you don't want them to. Super strong in there. Onion. You want more onion? Hold on. That's good. <coughs> Here, buy the onion. This is really good. Your your child likes onion. I know I showed y'all the Ikajime method that I was gonna start using now, and to be honest, I didn't know that it was gonna turn out to be this good, but there is a significant difference in the way the fish is, like the way it tastes, the way whenever you're preparing it, filleting and stuff like that, it's a lot firmer. Yeah and there is a definite noticeable difference. Some of y'all had major comments like I've been doing this for 30 years and I'm not gonna change now. To y'all, I just say, hey, if it's not broke, don't fix it. But to everybody else that wants to be adventurous and learn this method right here, I sincerely think that it's worth a little bit of time to actually prep this fish to come out. I mean, it, it tastes that much better than what we are used to having whenever we don't prepare it like this. So just imagine, as soon as that fish is caught, we brain spike it, so that's a humane kill. The fish is not gonna suffer at all, and then we spinal tap it, and that stops it from releasing toxins into the meat, and then we also uh, bleed it out, which the blood, it, it's uh, like the first thing that's gonna start the decay process, so bacteria and everything is in the blood system. You get all of that out, and what you end up with is a nice, firm speckled trout fillet, and it's to die for. So definitely give this a try. Thanks for watching. We truly appreciate each and every one of you. Hit that thumbs up if you enjoyed today's video. We're also on Patreon, so check that out in the description down below. Until next time, tight lines, y'all.